the time has come to answer the question, what is an electrohydraulic actuator? Last episode, we talked about what a hydraulic actuator is. The one before that, it was a pneumatic actuator, and before that, it was an electric actuator. But this is one that really brings together the advantages of several of those technologies for the benefit of motion control. I'm Corey Foster of Valen Corporation. Let's see what we can learn. If you recall how an hydraulic actuator operates, the pressure comes in one side, it moves the piston, then that pressure is exhausted through another side, and that extends the, uh, the rod. And as I talked about before, there's different system components that are needed for hydraulics, as shown here, needing to provide the liquid flow and control the fluid and make sure that liquid is clean. But I have a sneaking suspicion that a lot of these components may be able to go away when we start talking about electrohydraulics. So to answer that question, I brought in a colleague, an expert in electrohydraulics and hydraulics in general, in to join me and answer these questions that I'll have here. Rick Christensen, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. So what can you say about these components here? What goes away with electrohydraulics? Well, with uh, electrohydraulics, uh, kind of the, one of the driving design features is that they're compact and that they try to eliminate components. So uh, what you'll see go away in uh, you know, the electrohydraulic packages are all the big hoses, the, the big HPUs, you know, the hydraulic power units, those are gonna go away. You know, a lot of that supporting equipment, a lot of valving, uh, accumulators, regulators, all those pieces are gonna go away and they'll be built in, you know, in some fashion into the actuator itself. Okay, so for example, if we look at one manufacturer's design here, uh, we can see that right. there is an electric motor. Uh, we still have a pump and a reservoir here. It's pumping this through. Um, we got a, some relief valves and check valves, and then the actuator is moved here. Um, but if we want to take this one step further, let's take a look at this design where I see that we have an electric motor here, and we still have some uh, fluid going up. And, and maybe back out here. And so this is the reservoir, the screen? Uh, yeah, in this design, that would be the reservoir. And you know, you'll see from actuator to actuator, there's, there's a lot of common parts. So they'll all start out with some kind of, uh, some kind of motor. Uh, this is showing a servo motor. Uh, that's just kind of that black box on top of the pump. Uh, that servo motor is going to be turning uh, some kind of bi-directional gear pump, okay, which is actually going to push the, the fluid into the cylinder and out of the cylinder. But then, of course, since there's a difference in volume between the extend of the cylinder and the retract, you've got to have some place to put the difference uh, because, you know, when you're extending, you've got the full volume of the cylinder. When you're retracting, you have the full volume of the cylinder minus the volume of the rod. So you do have to have some kind of reservoir. And yeah, that's the green thing uh, in this drawing. All right, well, explain that, that pump more to me in this design. Yeah, and that's key. So this is, like I said, it's a, a bi-directional positive displacement pump. This is a gear pump, and it's uh, coupled directly to the motor. So all the speed, all the torque of the motor is available to push these gears around. So you see two relatively small uh, gears that, uh, you know, they're sitting usually on hydrostatic bearings and they'll push the hydraulic fluid one direction or the other direction in or out of the cylinder. Okay, great. Uh, so in this system, though, without having the hoses and all the fittings, how do we maintain the fluid in this? Yeah, yeah, which is a big difference. Um, so in most electrohydraulic actuators, it's a sealed unit, okay? Uh, and that, that gives you a few benefits. One of the, the benefits is that there's no vents, so you can use them in any orientation. Uh, the other benefit is that it's sealed, so the hydraulic fluid never gets exposed to air, so it never degrades, it never oxidizes. Mm -hmm. And then all since it's not constantly being circulated, you don't get all the, uh, the, the, the shear 
damage that will go into a uh, hydraulic fluid when it's put through a regular high circulating hydraulic power unit. So my understanding with hydraulics is always that they're not as accurate and repeatable as the electric world that I'm used to. But I see here with the servo motor, since we get power into it from a drive and we provide that feedback back to the drive, uh, which then shares that with the controller, uh, we have control over that motor. Um, and I know that in my electric world, we can use dual loop feedback, uh, two sources of feedback back to that, which is a little more sophisticated. But we can do that here with yours or with these as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. You kind of count on it. Um, the, the, uh, the encoder feedback isn't really precise uh, as you would like it to be. You know, I would love to say that, you know, one turn of the motor would give you, you know, X inches of travel. But unfortunately, because of the way the manifold's laid out and the difference in fluid path lengths between extend and retract, it, it's not really a one-to-one -one, uh, you know, situation like that. Uh, so yeah, what you'll find in most of these electrohydraulic cylinders is that there's a secondary or sometimes a tertiary feedback. So the, uh, the first feedback will be for position, but you can also add pressure sensors into the uh, into the manifold so that you can uh, close a feedback loop on force as well as position. Oh, okay, great. Uh, and one thing I have learned about these here is since we don't have a belt and pulley or gears or even tied directly to like a ball screw like we would in my electric world uh, with these hoses that these systems can be much more flexible. And I, I see here that we have a whole bunch of different configurations between um, you know, a short connection and a longer connection, or it can be straight. It can be put at different angles um, and all these different angles and configurations. I, I, that seems like that's a pretty flexible design. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, you know, you could do like a right angle, like a U-shape, like you see a lot of uh, electromechanical actuators. Uh, you can do inline, different 90 degree angles. Uh, or there's, you see, there's actually a 45 degree angle down at the bottom row there. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it makes them versatile. It makes them able to be retrofitted into existing applications, you know, makes them fit in tight places. Uh, just, you take advantage of all the, the power density that you get out of hydraulics. Right. So to summarize this into some pros and cons, you, we, we just talked about the flexibility. We didn't really talk about the minimal oil versus hydraulics, but because it's all one package and it's so much, uh, so much less fluid than in traditional hydraulics, but we still have the advantages of the hydraulics and the power density. And we have a lot of the advantages of electric and the control and the, some, you know, the power. Um, the one con that I can really see is the dual loop feedback. Now being an electric guy, I'm not afraid of that, but for a lot of people that could be a little more cum cumbersome and because it does make the controls more sophisticated. Uh, what other cons or advantages for that matter do you see? Yeah, well, just, just to kind of put a, a number on things, uh, when you talk about minimal oil, you know, in these kind of actuators, you're talking about ounces of fluid instead of gallons of fluid. Oh, wow, okay. So kind of put a number on it. Um, yeah, I mean, you can look at dual loop feedback as, as, you know, being complex and it's part of what you have to deal with. But there's also complexity gives you power. Uh, you know, you can run these things without any kind of worrying of tearing your machines apart because you can control on force. You can get, uh, you know, it force as well as position. And you can read those back out of the drive. So I'm not even sure that's a con. Uh, you know, some people do look at the, the larger package size as a con, uh, just because, you know, if you're using traditional hydraulics, you know, you just have a, a cylinder to deal with. But, uh, you know, with these electrohydraulic actuators, you've got to pack the cylinder as well as the, 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 you know, the hydraulic power supply into the same area. So some people can look at that as a, as a con. I see. Yeah, that does make sense. Well, great, Rick. I appreciate your insight, your expertise. Thanks for joining me. I hope that helps answer this question about what an electric uh, hydraulic actuator is. Reach out to us at valen.com or this email address here below. I'm Corey Foster at Valen Corporation. I hope this helped.